Well, let me give you some information. Yes, ma'am. I had a poll watcher come and stand behind me. And normally, in an African-American area and, and, and Hispanic areas, when they send poll watchers to our areas, they always send people that look like the Proud Boys into our communities. And they walk behind you and look just like they finna kick your rear end if you just move out of place. And they make you nervous. They make some people nervous. Okay. And this, this particular lady came and she stood behind me. And I politely turned around and asked her what did she want. And she looked at me and I looked at her. And I stood my ground. Because I didn't think that she needed to come and stand behind me while I cast my vote. Number one, I could read. I didn't have any need for assistance by anyone. And I definitely didn't need her to come stand near me. And what she was trying to do, or probably had been doing, I'm assuming from her conduct with me, that she had been intimidating those African-American persons and those Hispanic-American persons coming into that precinct trying to cast their vote by the mere presence of her nationality, her ethnicity, Anglo, looking mean, you know? You know? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I don't want to say it. <clears throat> anyway, she left me alone. And I, was, and I was able to cast my vote. But I can guarantee you, when that happens in, in our communities, it's a chilling effect upon the people who want to come and cast their ballots. And that in itself is intimidation as a poll watcher for me. In my opinion, I think that poll watcher should have been, should have been dismissed from that particular precinct. Did, and may I respectfully ask, did you complain to any person there about that poll watcher? When I had to say what I had to say to her, I think the lady left the room. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but I don't know if she came back. I didn't have to complain because I was, I was vocal enough in my statements that the election judge heard me and everyone else who was working that election in that room heard my statements. Now, I don't know how, whether she came back after I, my, I left voting, but the mere presence of her being in my poll, it was not, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned about her, her ethnicity as much as I was concerned about the way she looked mean, mad, tough. You know, like, you know, she's going to have everything got to be just like I wanted. You know, she's, she's the guard, the prison guard in there. And she made you feel like you were in a prison. That's the kind of things that comes in our, our minority communities by poll watchers. Uh, many times in an effort to be able to suppress our vote. And, and, you, and I believe that, that if had, she had some training, that she, number one, would have known that that kind of conduct was impermissible. Now, suppose they call the police. What, 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 what would have been the complaint? She, I felt intimidated as a voter for her conduct, and the police would say, ma'am, don't get near her next time. She's going to feel intimidated. You know, most people would have just left out of the room and probably not cast their votes. And they probably would have passed the word along and other persons coming in that polling place would not feel comfortable about casting their vote. And those are the sort of things that I, the reason why I'm asking you about education, some kind of training for poll watchers, because that, that kind of conduct is impermissible. I cannot disagree with you. And had I think the police that is come out, I don't think they would have done anything to her, particularly if they had been of the same nationality. 